You are watching Excess Report County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the October 7th, 2024 meeting of the Michigan City Redevelopment Commission. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportcounty.org. Good evening again, everyone. Um, I, at this time, I'd like to reconvene the, Mich the Michigan City Redevelopment Commission's regular meeting for Monday, October 7, 2024. Uh, we are online, and um, just for the record, we have a quorum. Uh, we are missing one member, but we have uh, four voting members here this evening so we can conduct our business. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, Mr. Gertner, the financial report for August 31st, 2024. Yes. Uh... In the operating account, we've got $86,743.06. Southside TIF account, $8,437,264. Southside TIF debt reserve account, $336,308.50. Southside TIF capital account, $16,199.79. North End TIF account, $3,367,863.89. East Side TIF, $575,943.13. North East TIF account, $900,291.82. For total cash balance of $13,720,614.19. We've got loans receivable, the County Business Loan Fund, $94,829.59. Total assets $13,815 or eight, $13,815,443.78. <laughs> Almost had it. <laughs> Perfection. Thank you so much. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion to accept the financial report for August 31st, 2024. Motion to accept. I'll second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of, of approving the financial report signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have public comments. Are there any members of the public, either here or virtually, who would like to make some comments? Well, yes, this is Tommy Kolovic from 1316 Ohio Street. I want to comment on the, the proposed uh, develop, residential development that's going to be going on in Tryon Street. I'm very excited to hear about that. The more, the better. You know, It's going to add to our property tax, hopefully help boost our continuously declining enrollment at the Michigan City Area Schools. The only one little issue I have is we got a lot of development going on. The plan commission is mulling our new townhouse development off of Moore Road. I know this little birdie told me there's going to be a workforce development housing going in this that general area. And that uh, that's not on the you know, the route, the trans, transit route for the Michigan City Municipal Transit. That generally is really only serviced by Route 1 and only go extends that route only extends goes to the old mall property. I don't like calling it the market mall anymore. Mm -hmm. But uh, just, she needs to consider, and Mayor needs to consider a fifth bus route to that area if we're going to have all that development going in. I know our, our fellow residents, Tall Timbers, they have had a fixed route bus that's in there, and that went in back in 1969. So it's really one thing that we really, you know, if that's that's the place where if, if that's important, you're having a fixed route bus service is important to you. That might not be the place for you and your family to establish your residency. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are there any other members of the public who wish to speak at this time? Anyone online? Last call, any members of the public who wish to speak at this time? All right, public comment is closed. Uh, moving on to our facade grants. Uh, because our staff person is not here, we'll be asking you to come up and present. And then if we have uh, any comments, uh, Clarence and um, our lawyer will jump in and assist you. Okay. Okay. Good evening, board. Uh, Kyle from the planning department. Um, so for the first facade uh, application is, is 607 Center Street. I have the applicant here um, who will be able to answer any questions that you might have. Um, previously, this one went in front of this board uh, at the November 13th, 2023 redevelopment meeting, uh, they were approved um, for the initial, um, for the entire uh, entire uh, $30,000. Um, since then, 
uh, they have been they were reimbursed the initial 15,000 at the uh, January uh, 8th, 2023 um, meeting. And since then, um, they have now come back um, to ask for the remaining 15,000. Uh, I worked with the applicant and I actually was at the site a week ago. Um, and I can say with confidence um, that the facade has been completed and now they are eligible for the remaining amount if you decide. Thank you, Kyle. Are there any questions from the board? Well, I know there has been a few months, but is it the sandwich shop? What is it? Um, it's um, current. Currently, they're still in the pro, uh, process, but it's going to be um, a, a kind of a sandwich slash smoothie shop and then maybe do some yoga um, there. So it's kind of an open space and they're, um, they have ideas of what they're going to do um, with the kind of a flexibility of the space. Thank you. Would the owner like to speak at all? Okay. All right. Well, it's a great building, I have to say. I drive past it often and it's looking really good. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions or comments from anyone on the board? I would entertain a motion to approve uh, the final uh, second payment of $15,000 um, as requested. I'll make the motion to approve the second payment of 15000 for the uh, remainder at 607 Center Street. All second. Great. We have a motion and a second to approve the secondary payment for $15,000 uh, for 607 Center Street uh, release of funds request. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Great. Motion has carried. Thank you. And thank you for investing in our community. All right. Next. So the next um, next facade application is for uh, seven uh, twenty two through seven twenty four. The applicant is also here, um, and he will be able to answer any questions after I re read my report. Um, so his request is for the entire amount of the thirty thousand, and what the work he's attempting to do is replace sixteen windows with Renew by Anderson. Uh, ranging from seven uh, double hungs, one picture window, and seven gliding windows. Um, this work also includes the stripping and the painting of the building for a total improvement cost of $68,723. Um, he also received, because he is located in the historic district, he also received the approvals um, through the Historic Preservation Board um, on August 26th, 2024. So he has, uh, based upon what I can determine, he has fulfilled his duties in terms of meeting code. Um, I also had a chance to talk with the um, the city, the, the Port County Assessor, and um, through a phone call, even though currently on Beacon, it will show that it is uh, residential. And the uh, assessor was able to tell me that it is um, that there has been updates in terms of how it's being assessed and that soon it will be assessed as commercial as because of how this program works. It had the property has to be assessed commercially to be eligible for the program. So the assessor was able to with confidence say that um, it will be taxed commercially. And again, what is going in there? Or um, so my understanding is what will be going into it is it's going to be mixed use with um, the possibility of a realtor's office on, I think, the first floor and then maybe apartments on the upper floor. Um, that is what it's supposed. That's my understanding of um, what the applicant has let me know that it will. Thank you. I would entertain a motion to approve the um, reimbursement of the $30,000 for 722 to 724 Washington Street. 
Motion to approve. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the uh, North End facade application for 722 to 724 Washington Street. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you for investing in our community. And then you have one more? I do. So the next one is for 1901 Franklin Street. Um, so they are applying um, as well for the forgivable loan of $30,000. Um, and the work to be involved is the restoration of the front facade to include new exterior front doors, as well as a door on West Barker Avenue. Um, to, to do uh, window replacement, some painting, as well as rebuilding of the uh, existing deck that they have, in addition to new exterior signage um, for a total investment cost of $55,000. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? Is this the Harmony Bar building? Yes, this is. <laughs> yeah. We all have stories from the Harmony Bar. <laughs> this is going to be a welcomed improvement. That, that is a piece of Michigan City history mm -hmm. and um, home for a lot of good times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is an exciting project. It will definitely uh, change the whole area. Yeah. Uh, looking at a wine bar. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's been a long time coming. And the owner is here, too. So he wants to come and speak. We'd love to have him come and tell us sure. what he's planning there. And I'd like to hear what's going to be on the menu beside the wines. Yeah. If you could kindly introduce yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Ford, for having me. I'm Kyle Hutchison. Um, as Clarence was saying, my business partner and I just bought 1901 Franklin Street, the previous Harmony Bar. Um, it's going to be called the Cellar Door. It's going to continue to be a bar. Um, I'm reimagined as kind of a you know great neighborhood bar with an amazing wine list, do classic stirred cocktails craft beer, of course, um, but we'll have, you know, something for everyone. We'll run specials on, you know, more like domestic beers and stuff too. Um, we are in the process of doing, redoing the whole first floor, I should say. So the main building that everyone's probably familiar with, there's also a back bar and then the beer garden as well. So part of that grant is for um, the deck itself. So the deck, the structure is super solid. I have new composite decking to go over the top to make it a lot nicer and like a wrought iron um, thing along for the safety rail instead of uh, the kind of tired, um, you know, existing uh, lattice work. So, yeah, we're really excited a little bit about myself. I'm originally from Michigan City, so I grew up on Fogarty Street at the top of the hill by Dune Billies um, in the 90s and moved out to Rolling Prairie with my family uh, when I was like 13. Uh, my wife and I moved to LA in 2013. That's where I got into the wine industry. I've been selling wine for the last like 15 years, business to business. Um, spent the last few years in Chicago and um, linked up with my former roommate from IU, who's a classically trained chef. Uh, we became business partners and I told him my idea actually at one of the Burnham parties at the old uh, location. We started talking and he was like, I'm in, I want to be your partner. It's like, that's cool. So yeah, the two of us were able to like collaborate together. He's basically going to run the back of the house and have a really cool program. Um, we're going to do, you know, high-end um, Italian, French, like charcuterie and cheese. I have baguette getting delivered um, from Chicago. Um, local coffee being roasted, like with our name on it. We're going to have a retail aspect. Um, I want to do a wine club. I mean, I just want to, you know, do a lot of things going to offer um vegan and vegetarian options um we're gonna do a really cool like cheesesteak smash burger you know uh hand cut fries but then also uh you know some like interesting kind of like lighter options and things like that so uh like i said we're trying to just like make something for everyone and we're super excited to be part of the community uh my wife and i just bought a house 18 months ago here on homer street um so kind of a there and back again sort of journey for us nice. and uh yeah we're really uh excited and happy with everything that uh you know we've been able to accomplish so far in town and we're looking forward to the future so i've been very excited to work with uh, this gentleman this is uh 
for me, the great story for somebody yeah. who's come back home to yeah. invest in our community. And so we like to tell this kind of story because this is what helps us to grow. And he's also bringing something unique back home from all his experiences being outside the state and come back home. And uh, he's investing. He believes that home is changing and for the better. And welcome. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, happy to be here. Well, welcome home. What a yeah, great story. Thanks. That's why we do all this hard work so that we can hear those stories. That's great. It. Um, so we have a request here on the, on the table for, um, let me see what, uh, 1901 Franklin street, also known as the Harmony bar, soon to be known as the cellar door, the cellar door. Yep. I love it. <laughs> um, I would entertain a motion to approve the, uh, um, the improvement for $55,000. I would like to make the motion to accept as presented for 55,000. For, for 30, 30 actually 30. Oh, sorry sorry yeah. sorry 30 read the wrong figure okay thirty thousand dollars sorry <laughs> no 55 sounded really good huh? <laughs> the, uh, i'll second yeah the loan is thirty thousand dollars just to be sure Gotcha. We have a motion and a second for um, the loan for 1901 Franklin Street in the amount of thirty thousand dollars all those in favor signify by saying aye 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 Motion has carried. Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck. <laughs> okay. So next on our agenda. One more thing. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. I just want to make sure that every, that the public knows that um, the agenda says uh, 113 West 8th Street. Right. Um, but Sherry, unless you would you would you like to provide kind of an update on West A Street before I officially ask to have it taken off? Yes, um, we are currently uh, gathering costs on that and um, helping the owner present that. Okay. So um, we're helping them through that process. So we should have something hopefully with by the end of the week. Mm -hmm. so, so we won't make any time for this. So it'd be for our next meeting. Mm -hmm. So would you like a table then? Yes. Table. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Can I would entertain a, I would entertain a motion to table one one three West Eighth Street uh, until our next meeting. Anyone a motion, please? Motion to table. I'll second. Thanks. We have a motion to table 113 West Eighth Street until our next monthly meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Thank Kyle. you. Appreciate it. Um, next on our agenda, we have Michigan City study area for Zimmer Zimmerman Volk Associates. Clarence? Or... Just to give the board an update, uh, we are currently working with this group to do, uh, um, uh, um, they're working with the group that got the cut up for the prison to study the prison. Uh, they're doing a housing study um, on the west side. And so we have asked them to uh, do an addendum for the contract and uh, for a minimal fee of $2,500 to do downtown and midtown. And so this for us is a great price for that. What was the price? I didn't catch it. $2,500. 2500 Okay. Yes. Thank you. So we have a um, agreement on the table uh, in the amount of $2,500 to um, Add to the scope of work by Zimmerman Volk Associates. Uh, is there any discussion? This I would entertain a motion. Is it their current grant though, or their current contract is with the state? Correct, or is it with us? It, it, most the entire thing is with us. Okay, all right, all right. So, but this is the redevelopment commission portion of the for the housing study downtown. Yep. Okay. I would entertain a motion to approve. I'll make a uh, a motion to approve the twenty five hundred dollar uh, proposal from Zimmerman Volk Associates. I'll second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve um, this revised agreement in the amount of two thousand five hundred dollars for Zimmerman Volk Associates. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Thank you. Next, we have a letter of engagement with Barnes and Thornburg for residential infrastructure fund loan. This um, this also piggybacks with agenda item number ten. Basically, the letter of engagement we have with Barnes and Thornburg is for Randy Rampola to continue to serve as our bond counsel for this bond. Um, and given the fact that it is something that is well, it's a new project. It's a different project, and so what we need to do is we need to formally approve or formally adopt the representation from Mr. Rampola on behalf of the commission for getting this bond approved. Okay. 
I would entertain a motion to approve um, this uh, agreement. Letter of engagement. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the letter of engagement with Barnes and Thornburg for the residential infrastructure fund loan. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Motion is carried. Uh, next, we have resolution 2-24, the bond resolution for residential infrastructure fund loan. And again, I'll introduce Randy Rampolo. Okay. Uh, he can tell you about... Mr. Rampolo, would you uh, come up and just give us a general overview? Um, good evening. I'm uh, Randy Rampolo with the law firm of uh, Barnes & Thornburg with offices in South Bend, Indiana. Um, the resolution that's before you is a continuation of the action you took at the prior meeting where you adopted a preliminary bond resolution, which authorized preliminarily bonds on behalf of the Michigan City Redevelopment District that would be sold ostensibly to the Indiana Finance Authority. And uh, this continues that. Uh, you also would be appropriating with your next action the proceeds of the bonds. This resolution authorizes bonds in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $4.8 million. Uh, the term of the bonds as set out in the resolution is to be uh, 20 years, and the interest rate is not to exceed 4%. Those are parameters, and at this point, we would anticipate the interest rates being uh, hopefully slightly less than 3%, uh, but certainly not much more than 3%. And also, um, and I think Andy spoke about this at the last meeting, uh, the intent is likely to issue the bond so they'll mature in 16 years, not 20. Um, and the benefit of that is, is that uh, if you read through the resolution, we are effectively pledging all of the tax increment finance for the consolidated north and south areas, but we've excluded the station block. So any increment that the station block would be generating would be applied to that bond issue, and it wouldn't have a formal pledge against it. And so we were able to do that with a term of 16 years. I know uh, Andy and myself had discussions with Skyler, and Andy talked to the Indiana Finance Authority and everybody was fine with the idea of doing 16 years without a pledge of the station block TIF. So in this resolution, we left the, the maximum term at 20 uh, just to provide some flexibility if it's necessary, but we also removed uh, or excluded the station block TIF from being pledged to the payment of the bonds. Um, the intent, as was mentioned at the last meeting, and I've alluded to it, is this bond would evidence the debt that the uh, redevelopment district would enter into with the Indiana Finance Authority as part of its residential infrastructure program. Um, the state allowed a couple of years ago now, um, uh, or I guess it was last year, it seems longer ago, but in the last two years ago, legislative session, to provide the Indiana Finance Authority to address housing needs in the state. And so they have a funding program the city applied under that funding program and was awarded funding. And the way it would work is these bonds would be issued. Uh, there's a, an attachment of a financial assistance agreement. That agreement would be signed by the redevelopment district and the city. Uh, the bonds would be payable from TIF. The benefit to the city and the redevelopment district is that you're able to get below market interest rates for the loan. Um, and as indicated in the resolution, the loan would be used for sewer improvements that would help promote residential development in an area of the city where sewage is is sewage improvements are necessary to allow future residential growth. Um, so with this resolution, you're authorizing the issuance of those bonds based on those terms. Um, you'll appropriate, if you adopt this resolution, the next one you would be appropriating the proceeds. The next step would be then a, a approval by the Common Council, which is required under the statute to allow for the issuance of the bonds. Um, and uh, then we would just proceed on through closing. Right now, we're anticipating closing being uh, mid-December. Um, so we would close before the end of the year. Um, part of the timing of closing is the timing of the receipt of bids. And uh, as I understand it, bids are expected to be in uh, around Thanksgiving. And so once bids are in and they've been verified, we would then proceed closing with closing to the Indiana Finance Authority for this debt. So again, there's no tax levy backup. A lot of times in the past, you've done lease financings where there have been tax levy backups. There will not be one here. That's another benefit of being able to go uh, sell bonds to the IFA as opposed to going out to the market. You don't have to secure these other than from the TIF revenues. So 
This does pledge all of the TIF of the consolidated area, consolidated area other than the station block, um, but you are getting it at a better interest rate and you're not having to have an additional tax backup to be able to sell the bonds to the market. So I've covered a lot in a short period of time. The resolution is relatively thick, but I didn't want to go through page by page. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have regarding the resolution or the process overall. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? So we got a good briefing before the meeting from our attorney. So um, he yeah, answered you know, some of our questions. The only thing just to add, uh, the, the Randy and I will be appear before the Common Council next Tuesday for their approval on this as well. Okay, thank you. So before we uh, vote on this, we we need to have a public hearing, correct? It's actually the next resolution. I apologize if I wasn't. Oh, clear. okay. Yeah, next All resolution. Right. Okay, so um, at this time, uh, we entertain. I would entertain a motion to approve the two dash two four bond resolution uh, for residential infrastructure fund loan. Motion to accept. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Thank you. So next, we have um, the appropriation resolution. Um, do you want to go ahead and give us a short um, explanation, then we'll have the public hearing and then we'll, we'll do the vote? Sure. So this resolution just does appropriate the proceeds of the bonds you just authorized. Um, because the bonds weren't anticipated in the budget at the beginning of the year, you're required by law to do this additional appropriation for these proceeds. Um, again, there's no tax implications as part of the additional appropriation because the bonds will be payable solely from the TIF revenue. So, And it does require the public hearing, as you noted. Right. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing for resolution 3-24, appropriation resolution for residential infrastructure fund loan. Um, are there any members of the public who wish to testify or speak or ask a question at this time? Anyone online? The public hearing, does, is, are there any members of the public who wish to speak at this time? Hearing none, the public hearing is closed. And at this time, I would accept a uh, motion and a second for resolution 3-24, the appropriation resolution for the residential infrastructure fund loan. So moved. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolution 3-24 appropriation resolution for the infrastructure fund sorry, residential infrastructure fund loan. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Thanks so much. Moving on, Amendment 1 to the Chicago Consultant Studio Solicitation Services Contract. Say that fast, 10 times. <laughs> Woo. You want this one? Uh, Commission, uh, this is a, um, a contract that we approved, uh, I think, earlier, like last year, I guess it was, but we did an RFP, uh, we did, made up an RFP process for the Fifth and Pine site. And uh, once we got the RFP out and it came back, we realized quickly that we had to do it a little differently to get the best um, the best response. And so we went from a one-step process to a two-step process, which is an interactive RFP, uh, where we get to actually meet with the developers, um, get them to tell us what they're trying, what we're trying to do, answer the questions. And so we've been going through that process. We met twice with the finalists, uh, the four finalists, and uh, the goal is to get the best product for Fifth and Pine. And so the um, end date, of course, to for our final, um, so this, uh, final responses end of um, October. So this one has actually made the um, contract um, go a little further than expected. So they're asking for us to, to just um, expand on, amend the contract to show the new changes that have been done, which is the, the two process RFP. And not to exceed $60,000. Exactly. <laughs> so we have a, um, a, a amendment overview, not to exceed $60,000. Um, and the deadline to receive everything back would be the end of the year? Well, for the uh, second to get the, the um, RFP best and final would be end of, end of October. Okay. But we will probably have to negotiate with, the team that selected, I'm thinking probably January, February before we will get back. All right, thank you. And the addendum itself is for a six month period of time. Right. Mm -hmm. so. Any other questions or comments from the board? 
I would entertain a motion to um, accept the amendment as presented. I'd like to make the motion to accept it as presented. I'll second. Great. We have a motion and a second to accept the amendment, amendment one to the Chicago Consultant Studio Solicitation Service Contract. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Thank you. Next, we have an MOU between the MCRC, Northwest Indiana Regional Workforce Opportunity Collaborative. We originally uh, received a presentation um, from the um, Re uh, Indiana Regional Workforce Opportunity Collaborative, or NWI Works, two months ago. And this was, as you recall, it was to establish an uh, opportunity hub at Elston School. Um, making it an all-inclusive type of, well, basically to to, to assist um, uh, citizens at a central location for a variety of activities. Um, I drafted an original MOU uh, that was presented to you last month, but was not finalized, and certainly we didn't have the necessary approval from N uh, North uh, the Indiana Regional Workforce Opportunity Collaborative. From that original agreement, there have been two changes that have been made, and that's the one that you have now and that has been executed by NWI Works. The first is that paragraph six um, um, delineates exactly what the for, what the funds from the Redevelopment Commission will be used for, and more importantly, at least from a statutory perspective, what they will not be used for, and that is specifically marketing and advertising, because the statute says that if you're going to use it for marketing and advertising, you need to decrease the amount of fund or the decreased percentage of the amount of money you're allowed to provide for that. So we specifically spelled out it will not be used for that so as not to have that restriction. The other change has to do with in the final par paragraph, you had agreed in principle to provide uh, $1.2 million over the course of three years. The last paragraph delineates how that money will be spent uh, or how that money will be withdrawn. Uh, the first $400,000 payment uh, will be uh, approved uh, by virtue of the MOU this month. Um, and then the second one will be in April of 2025 and the third one will be in April of 2026. Uh, but the actual terms of the MOU uh, both reflect what the statute requires, but also from the presentation you heard um, uh, at their original presentation in September. Are there any comments or questions? I think because of the, uh, this is a um, long-term com commitment and an, a lot of money. So I, I would like to read the section three, the kind of outlines, uh, section two and three, sorry. Uh, section one, two, and three, just so that the community can hear um, what the um, the intent of this is. So it's the principal functions at Elston School will be the provision of educational programs, worker training programs, and worker retraining programs. Um, it's a hu uh, opportunity hub, uh, which would include Michigan City and include, but are not limited to adult training and education, childcare and youth learning, next-gen technology, innovation and entrepreneurship, health and wellness, art and culture, transportation and mobility, and trails, parks and recreation, and will promote the redevelopment and economic development within the city of Michigan City and is in the best interest of Michigan City residents. Just think that that's, um, there's a lot there, and I think it's uh, some great uh, opportunities for our community. Uh, we often talk or hear people complain that everything is for our, our our visitors and our outsiders. This is definitely a project for our residents, for people who live here to, um, you know, improve our our um, offerings for families and children, to make sure that people who um, need training and retraining, educational programs, um, can access them easily. And uh, we're working on making sure that upward mobility is. Uh, in everyone's best interest, and it's achievable by everyone who lives here. So I just wanted to make sure we talked about that. At this time, I would entertain a motion to approve the um, MOU. I'd like to make the motion to approve the MA MOU as presented today. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the MOU between Michigan City Redevelopment Commission and the Northwest Indiana Regional Workforce Opportunity Collaborative. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, next on the agenda, we have Smith Group proposal to relocate the You Are Beautiful sign. Uh, I don't know who wants to speak to that. Um, with the um, hopefully pending uh, beginning of the solar project, obviously we need to move uh, and relocate the You Are Beautiful uh, artwork. Um, the uh, Michigan City Art Commission has identified a site, and I, well, I think everybody's in agreement with it, um, close to the Greenway Park near West 4th Street and Michigan Boulevard um, as it relates to the Singing Sands Trail. And it's not just, you know, so again, when you look at in terms of, of what this, what we're hiring a consultant for, it's not just simply to move uh, the sign, uh, that certainly wouldn't be worth the money, but rather it's to develop the entire area there because there really is no rest area, for lack of a better word, on all of Singing Sands Trail. So the idea behind it is to put the You Are Beautiful sign in this location, but that would go beyond that. So the Smith Group's presentation here or proposal here is to look at various types of things that we can put in that location, not just simply moving the sign, but rather how do we make this like an attractive rest area and a needed rest area along the Singing Sands Trail. The agreement that's, or the proposal that's being put before you is for a consultation uh, or a consulting group. I wanted to say it was 25,000, but I can't find it now. Um, and the idea behind, while well, I'm looking for that, can you see it? say it again. Station. Yeah, so 26675. Okay. Um, is that they will present kind of like a menu. Uh, yeah, there it is, 20 for $26,675. They will present their their final plan will be will be, you know, we establish and it's noted in there that, that over a hypothetical budget of a quarter of a million dollars. But that's nothing more than just a hypothetical number at this point. Their final draft will show. Kind of like a, uh, if you go to a restaurant and you want to order things a la carte, their report will indicate, well, if you want this, this is how much that would cost. If you want this, this is how much this would cost. Um, moving the sign will be a very small number of that full $250,000 hypothetical budget. Um, but the idea is to really is to put the sign in a permanent location um, uh, and around a an attractive uh, area for users of the Singing Sands Trail, as well as improving uh, the overall aesthetics of Michigan City. Um, so the proposal would be simply at this point for uh, for the consulting services to $26,675. So, so some of the items on the menu uh, that we may consider in the future are, I think are very interesting because it explains why this is uh, would be a wonderful community amenity, not just for people who are riding their bikes through our community, sure. but the sign will be lit. Um, it would have uh, signage, signage for the community as to what, where some of our other attractions are. Um, there'll be some uh, landscaping architecture, uh, perhaps water for drinking and filling up your water bottle, perhaps a bicycle fix-it station and some bathrooms. So these are things that would be um, amenities for um, anyone who's in the area, but um, anyone who's using those trails, and certainly that we don't have anything at that in that area of town for um, that would serve some of these needs. So. And two other things that, that are part of this is that uh, one of the things that when I was talking to Kathy Dennis from the Art Commission, um, one of the things that happens in Michigan C frequently that was not anticipated, but that particularly weddings. <laughs> That the bride and grooms are going in front of the you are beautiful sign and taking wedding pictures in front of it um so we want to make sure we continue to capture that um and then the other part is just to note that in addition to working with the art committee uh we are also working with it is anticipated that the parks department will ultimately take over this and be responsible for uh maintenance in the future all right um i would entertain a motion to um accept this um Letter of proposal for the Smith Group in the not to exceed amount of twenty six thousand six hundred and seventy five dollars. Anyone? Motion to accept. Thank you. Motion to, to accept. Twenty six thousand six seventy five. I'll second. 
Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve the um, You Are Beautiful um, letter of agreement. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. We have a um, we uh, the motion has been accepted for the Smith Group proposal. Thank you. Moving on, um, an update on the 11th Street Station Garage and the residential towers. Um, people in our community are watching with great interest. Uh, anything that we need to update them on, Lauren? Just so the only thing that uh, Skyler informed me of um, that the big attraction of the the huge cranes uh, will be coming to an end this week. They are done with the. Um, all of the towers that are in place that they need the cranes for, and they should be moving out. The garage itself from the uh, external side is pretty much complete now. It's just working on getting everything together. It's anticipated completion date somewhere again between um, end of December and probably no later than, than February, weather permitting, and hopefully everything continues to go okay. Uh, they will also then start working then on the um, apartment tower aspect of the project on the northwest corner. And that'll be coming up, also going on at the same time once the cranes have been moved out. No, I mean, the work continues. Uh, it's great to see it, uh, it go up fast. As um, as Alan said, uh, we anticipate the um, garage being open March of next year. And uh, renovations are going to start going for the, for the um, apartments. And there'll be a whole lot more people out there in the next six, six to nine months because there's a lot, lot more people working on apartment complex, you know, the trades, Carpenters, concrete, plumbing, electrical, and a whole, whole lot of people will be, will be on site next next few next few months. A lot of people ask about the exterior facade. Um, you know that it's currently cement. Is that um, any updates on that? I think that's going to be one of the last things that's put up. Okay, I mean, obviously, but there is something being put up. That's, oh yeah, I guess yeah, absolutely, I, I, absolutely. I'm, I'm, yeah. Leading questions so that people can hear that it's right. that not going to just uh, be a a barracks type situation. No, it is still, it has been, and and the facade has been refurbished and has been um, rebuilt, and 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 so yeah, it'll be a nice. Now the the old facade, as you recall, was was uh, worn and torn. Uh, this will be a revamped and a, and a, and a very uh, aesthetically pleasing uh, facade to put on the uh, front of the garage there on Eleventh Street. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda. Um, the anything on the you are beautiful sola site, uh, Clarence? Where we are on or... that is that um, I, I'm not sure where we are. What we've said previously, but we have gone back and forth in terms of negotiating uh, the economic development corporate. Uh, the, with the I'm sorry, an economic development agreement that um, I think at the last meeting we indicated we there was ball was in their park. We submitted what we thought was uh, the final agreement. Last Thursday or Friday, I want to say, is uh, received an acceptance of that. So I think that's one more step in the right direction. The next area then is uh, Baker Tilly in consultation with uh, County Assessor Mike Schultz. We'll once again run the numbers on that to make sure this ends up being, from a, from a financial viewpoint, profitable for both for the developer, but then also uh, of assistance for the city as well. So we anticipate that'll happen, I guess, within the next month. So hopefully what we will do. Excuse me. At the November meeting, hopefully, we will have a project agreement that will be approved, be presented to the commission for approval. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All right, let's no, move on. Great, great update, and like eventually it goes to city council because I, I right. a large, it's a large and complicated project, and so we're taking our time. Right. That's a good thing. Um, so any other reports by legal counsel? Only other thing is to report that before this meeting, there was an executive session. Uh, no items were discussed that are not permitted by the open door law and no decisions were made. Thank you. Next on our agenda is the report by the director. Since he is not here and he um, had these two gentlemen help uh, give all the information. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to say or anything you'd like to say? Okay. No. Thank you. Very good. Uh, just want to say, uh, with us, uh, Condolences to, condolences to prayers with uh, to Scala and his family. Uh, we had a, he had a death in the family, and so just want to remember him in our prayers in the next couple, 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 couple weeks. Yeah, I think the I think the commission joins you in uh, sympathy for Skyler's family as they're dealing with poor health. Um, any commissioner that has a comment or question comments? No? Just to share that we have discussed at the board meeting uh, and with the administration about the hub at Elston okay. and everybody's 
on that page. Which, good, good. Uh, we're excited about that partnership. I think it's a great, great partnership and also bringing the schools together with the redevelopment commission with the city. I mean, we're all, we're all rowing in the same direction. And, and yes, Tom, you have a long history with our community, so you know, it hasn't always been like that. So this is a good thing. A lot of good things are happening. That's right. Yes. That's right. Um, our next meeting will be, um, uh, have to be determined because it is uh, dated for the 11th of November and that's veterans day. So we will uh, let the community know when our next meeting will be held at this time. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Anyone? Motion to approve. <laughs> I'll second. All right. We have a, a motion to adjourn and a second. Thank you so much. Uh, meeting is adjourned. <laughs>